Yes, I have to pick up and have to. I will pick up a new shirt on my way to work. And before we do so, we will talk a little bit about Europa League. I made a huge note sheet here that is red here, helping me make sense of it all for you guys. Because it really is a lot of results and I said it before, I'll say it again, the Europa League there is a lot of interesting stuff actually happening uh, that I personally am quite happy about. Uh, in a way the group stage of the Europa League is a lot more interesting and I also thought yesterday, yesterday it was very sensible that we had two games very early, five o'clock, because those were played way out east. Um, I like that. I also thought, um, you know, yes, you want to give the Champions League its due, but you know, there are eight groups here uh, in the Champions League and there are 12 groups in the Europa League. Uh, it used to be when we had three competitions that Tuesday was usually the UEFA Cup. Was it? Yeah, Tuesday, UEFA Cup. Wednesday was the European Cup or the Champions League. And the Thursday was the Cup Winners' Cup. And I was thinking maybe uh, they should do something similar, especially now that, that we have a third competition in the making. Uh, I was thinking at least, you know, uh, take two or four groups even and put them in the seven o'clock spot of the Europa League. Put them in the seven o'clock spot uh, in Tuesday or Wednesday, or if you can, you could do it, take two, two groups, uh, have them play on Tuesday, then have um, three Champions League groups play on Tuesday, and then take five Champions League groups that you play on Wednesday, and then the rest of the Europa League on Thursday. Uh, to me, that would make a whole lot of sense. Uh, they have a little bit more even, but then yeah. Who am I to judge? Uh, UEFA has its reasons. I just did something incredibly stupid here. Oh, there you go. Okay, I did something incredibly stupid, but we'll make it. Um, but let's get to the Europa League because yesterday uh, I had a lot of results that I liked. Um, I could go now. Th yeah, let, 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 let's go through it group by group. Um, and we'll talk about, I watched again the conference, um, which is the, makes the most sense. Not super tired, I didn't see anything uh, full. I think I saw the second half of the first match day. Well, not even that, I heard her, her but I saw a lot of the second. So uh, I, I saw most of the second uh, games, but you know, I was always checking the scores, but it was more. More present than I was during the Champions League uh, with my family. Deservedly so. Okay, Group A uh, is one that was uh, more or less decided, if it wasn't already decided, I think. Uh, but you know, we had Zurich uh, losing at home to Larnaca, so they are now in the worst spot to get uh, first place in, the, in his group, which is definitely something they would like to have. And we had Bayer Leverkusen play 1 1 to do the war. It's also being 1 0 down. So, yeah, um, both of them are qualified. And since the other two have not much, much to play for, except maybe uh, some money that you get for the points, this was kind of an un un underwhelming group. And I was a little bit not so happy that uh, they put probably way too much emphasis on that. There was, however, a big game, the which was Salzburg, Leipzig, and I know everything at modern football, blah, 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 blah. Uh, I honestly, yes, it's the Austrian team, but I was looking f somewhat forward to it. And if I had to choose one game, probably that would have been Evit over the Milan game, not the Bene, because I think both of them play a good style of soccer. And I don't think takes the Europa League too seriously. Uh, I gotta be honest with them too. But Salzburg Leipzig is a big game, and honestly, uh, there is more ill will uh, towards each other, especially from the Salzburg side, because many players, uh, Rangnick, who is now the coach, is sporting director in Leipzig. Uh, he was sporting director for the whole Red Bull operation. Um, and 
after him, yes, the new style that is so attractive was established, but also what got established at Salzburg was a feeder club for Leipzig. And sending player after player after player, I mean, uh, have the Leipzig squad. It's hyper hy hy hyperbole, but uh, many players from the Leipzig squad played for Red Bull Salzburg not too long ago. So um, that was kind of the ill will, and then his statement that without him, uh, there wouldn't be the current uh, sporting director, and there wouldn't be no Marco Rose, who is actually. Ah, super successful coach. I mean, he won the youth league with Salzburg. He, he had last year many in the semifinals, and now uh, they had uh, four wins out of four games, and they made it five wins out of five games, but beating Leipzig deservedly so. Uh, for me, it was notable that this was the first time that Salzburg actually played in the white kids at home. Uh, they usually played now with the red kids, but I guess the Red Bull clubs said, okay, let's have Leipzig play in black. Looked all right. I uh, just. I know you have already just uh, Salzburg using this weird logo and uh, other sponsors in. <laughs> That's just something that doesn't quite sit with me. Uh, well, I understand what you uh, have wants to do, but you know, you have Bayer 04 Leverkusen, that is the exception, and they have an Asbury Pill right in the center and all their logos. So it's. Um, Whatever one thinks about it, I just find it a little bit odd that you, a club has two identities in a way. But yeah, Salzburg dominated most of the games. Leipzig had only uh, one half chance by Timo Werner uh, in the first half. Salzburg had not great chances, but had sufficient chances uh, to, to, to be able to take the lead if they would have connected. Uh, second half, they really they put the game away. Uh, they made it 1 0. Goldbrunson had chances before. Then uh, was a big save um, on Timo Werner, who actually sh showed the middle finger to the goalkeeper. Apologized afterwards, but you know, uh, not the finest move. And so Salzburg puts Leipzig into trouble. Celtic wins at round time. Very unremarkable game. Even the commentator said this was a horrible second half. But the most remarkable thing are the horrible Celtic jerseys. Uh, if you haven't seen those, those neon yellow jerseys by Celtic are just dreadful. Absolutely dreadful. Gonna say it like that. Um, then uh, Group C is also. So we, uh, we have now. To finish it up, uh, Celtic, Salzburg 15, Celtic 9, Leipzig 6, Salzburg now fix uh, in the next round and also winning the group. Uh, Celtic has the advantage over Leipzig. Leipzig would have the tiebreaker, so Celtic needs to win at home to Salzburg, who has nothing to play for except for pride. And they already did one with uh, one 18-pointer uh, UEFA Cup season, uh, Europa League season. After that, they were Chief Swiftly eliminated, which was kind of disappointing. So yeah, um, they are making surely a lot of points. And Leipzig needs to win at home against Rosenberg. So it is definitely a situation that's more in favor of Celtic, uh, you gotta say. And it's very clear Salzburg won every duel, every game so far. Rosenberg loses every game so far, and Celtic and uh, Leipzig split the points. That loss to uh, Celtic was a, a big downer for Salzburg. Gotta be said like that. Okay, gonna get past the truck. The next group, Group C, also a quite interesting one, I have to say. Um, in that group, Zenit was playing Copenhagen. Zenit was playing Copenhagen and uh, won one nil and qualified. And Bordeaux got the first win uh, uh, overall against Slavia two nil. I think they even hold the tiebreaker over Slavia now, but that doesn't matter much. Uh, we have now Zenit uh, at with eleven qualified. Uh, Slavia seven. I think Zenit even has the first place secured. Copenhagen has five and Bordeaux has four. Um, so all. 
all have still a chance here yeah, Bordeaux holds a tiebreaker over Slavia um, it is that the uh, two bottom teams uh, Copenhagen holds Bordeaux and uh, Slavia hosts Zenit so yeah uh, a win for Bordeaux and the right result could see Bordeaux through however I think it's Copenhagen that has uh, more has slightly better chance uh, maybe maybe even uh, Slavia because all they need is a draw I think I think well those are the first three groups I'm gonna get my jerseys now and we're gonna talk about the other groups thereafter how about the other okay I got them but I'll open this at a later point I'll make a video have it maybe someday we'll, we'll see um, I now have to go quickly to a store but in the meantime we can talk about the next one or two groups because both of them were not that super interesting which is now group D uh, where there was no goal uh, we had Fenerbahce and Zagreb play a nil nil draw and we had Anderlecht and Trnava play a nil nil draw uh, which means Fenerbahce and Zagreb Zagreb I think was already also, because no one else is making uh, anything. I saw that Anderlecht had a few chances, but that was pretty much it that I saw. I thoroughly. This is uh, this group is definitely the exception to the rule that um, it's more exciting in the Europa League. And the, the next group, which is uh, with no D, is Group E. Uh, also, more or less decided, I mean, Arsenal I think was already through, they win 3-0 in Poltava, uh, not in Poltava, in Kiev against Poltava. Um, and I think the big story here was that the Ukraine basically declared martial law on its eastern part, but although Poltava is in the east, uh, that region was not affected by the martial law, and they just moved it to Kiev. Um, I, you know, I understand maybe some security concerns, but overall, if there was no martial law declared in, in uh, Poltava, uh, let the game be played there. Give the fans there the chance to finally see Arsenal, even if it's uh, just a second string team. But you know, those fans don't see anyone. I, I find this, you know, it's all about the big clubs in a way. Uh, 3-0 victory, I think it was 3-0 at halftime. Uh, that was that, and <laughs> Sporting at Karabakh uh, was even worse. I mean, uh, Sporting took an early lead, Karabakh equalized, and then it ended 6-1 for Sporting. You know, the red light continues, I even can get group, the next group in easily. Yes. So 6-1, uh, basically, Sporting also now through. say second string squad because Milan is just so ravaged with uh, injuries that you cannot even say they are playing with a second string squad this is the, more or less the first string squad Trona got an early goal and then Dude Lange makes one goal before the half and scores another one after the half 2-1 and I'm thinking yeah Milan is really throwing away the Europa League uh, they do everything to not you know, everything for um, the Serie A, which, uh, to be honest, there is part of me that doesn't mind that. But you don't lose to do the launch at all. Um, fortunately, the turnaround, I think it was an own goal after a shot by Chalanoglu and Chalanoglu with a, a long reach shot so makes it 3 2. Another own goal, and then Borini players makes it 5-2 so the end result is more or less what one will be able to expect but the way getting there uh, should have been uh, Gallup definitely Gallup said that 
um, you know, part of one leap in San Siro. I think there's still a lot of movement about that. Uh, great. I need to turn around here. And in the other game in that group, it was. Um, Seven points. Olympiakos still needs to, uh, still has a chance. Uh, they need to beat Milan at home. However, uh, since they already lost the first game, um, three-one, they need to win by two goals outright. Uh, Two-nil at three-one. Uh, I would say even that it uh, is a matter of uh, goal differential, where I think Milan has the advantage. Of Olympiakos really put a, a huge dent. And so, yeah, a draw, a 1 0 loss, and Milan is through with a little bit of a headache, but they made it, so I guess it would, could be alright. More of a good ending to a scary season. Milan only lost once to Betis, but I always felt might not make it out of, out of the group and they still could achieve exactly that. Okay, I'm here and I will continue with the other groups on my way to work. And up until then, just bear with me. Okay, I finally can make it to work. But you know, it's nice to have some time. Sometimes a morning way just to run around a little bit as well. Okay, we have done all the groups from A to F. Let's go to G, which is a very also an interesting group, um, and actually had a big surprise result to me. Um, the early game was Spartak Moscow against Rapid Wien, and Lask just beat Rapid. Thoroughly deserved and a big crisis. Spartak, as far as I can tell, uh, also somewhat in a crisis, but I didn't I didn't think that uh, that Rapid can get something. Rapid needed to get a point. Losing to Spartak was not an option, as that would have meant that they are eliminated. Um, and the game was relatively even for most of the time. Spartak having bigger chances, but a bit not uh, hiding, uh, which to the credit, I gotta say, is... Well, but on the other side, they play... Rapid is in crisis, but it, uh, they play better against opponents that actually also seek to play. Although Lask completely, uh, Lask is a, a high pressing team at the moment, uh, and they completely suffocate Rapid. Spartak obviously is not. So yeah, Spartak uh, got the lead in I think a half an hour in, and I remember we even heard I, I was still at work when this happened and. Uh, Colleagues said, yeah, Rapid already conceded, and we all said, yeah, it's not going to end up well. Honestly, the game was still even. There was a lot to play for. Um, both teams had their chances. I think uh, Spartak could have made it 2-0, um, but Rapid then uh, slowly got things going and equalized in the 80th uh, from a corner kick. Turkish national team player, which I was surprised, but okay. Uh, to me, I hold, I probably hold the Turkish national team still in higher regard than, uh, than it should, thanks to the third place finish. And I always think, you know, for me, Fenerbahce, Besiktas, and Galatasaray are teams that, at least mentally, to me, are in the 
second, lower second tier of European club football, but um, maybe not quite. Uh, it's, <laughs> maybe I hold them too high. I, I don't know, but yeah, he made it 1 1, which would already have been a sensational result for Rapid. Um, because they held the tiebreak against Spartak. Um, but, you know, it would have kept them alive. It got even better. Uh, a great ball played forward in stoppage time. I think it was a hair of sight. Uh, I think Schobesberger was the one who was running then towards goal uh, just with a touch around the keeper and then uh, slowly slowing it in, in, into the empty net for a result that I did not expect. Rapid winning 2 1 at Spartak and now they're in an excellent shape uh, in that group. The other game, uh, Rangers against Villarreal, I think as an Austrian for our points in the league and you know gotta say Rapid and Salzburg are two teams that in the Bundesliga I I really don't want anything from them. Uh, I only want to beat them. They are, they are, they are my two teams at Austria Vienna and you three teams that I really don't uh, like overall but you know in Europa uh, in Europe uh, they're doing actually quite well and uh, I don't know is it the picture or whatever it is good for them that they make the points so yeah in that sense uh, I was happy to see that that they win now the other game Rangers via Real 0-0 uh, zero, zero. it ended via Real having a little bit more of the game but it was kind of an intense game um, but also uh, Rangers got a red card and I'm a little bit disappointed that Villarreal didn't couldn't get anything out of it. Villarreal had only one win in this group <laughs> and four draws so far, um, which puts them at seven points. Uh, Rapid has seven points. Rapid has, uh, had only, has two losses and one draw. And the loss against Villarreal was a big one. And so very open group. Every team still can qualify. We have now in the final round uh, Villarreal hosting Spartak, uh, Moscow. A draw will see them through. It's just not otherwise possible. Uh, Spartak needs to win and Rapid at home against the Rangers. And same thing, a draw will see them through. Uh, Rangers and Spartak need to win, but they can make it. So it's really uh, almost all combinations are possible. Rapid, no, uh, the direct tools are, are, are not possible, uh, the both of them at once, but everything else uh, is still wide open. Uh, very interesting group, uh, one of the two most interesting ones, there's nothing decided yet, it's very even, it might not be the highest quality, but it's a very even group, um, and for that reason, you gotta like it. So that was that group, uh, the next group is was not that interesting, that's the Frankfurt group. Um, Frankfurt beats Olympique Marseille by 4-0 and uh, you know, it wasn't even a minute played and they already had a 1-0 lead. And then the own goal of the year. Uh, it was Luis Gustavo, I think he was the one who eliminated Salzburg uh, with his goal in overtime in the semi-final return like last year. Uh, he has the ball a little bit, you know, if he was facing towards uh, the opponent's goal, he would have been on his on the right side of the pitch, and you know, the edge of the box, um, he kind of moves towards his own goal, but is not, always not looking well. He sees he is pressed by two Frankfurt players, and decides, well, let's play it back to the goalie. Problem is, the goalie was not in goal. I don't know who is to blame, is it the goalie or is it Luis Gustavo for not looking, I think both equally. I don't get why the goalkeeper was outside of the goal. I mean, he had to run back and it was a horrible, horrible on goal. And you know, it was even, it was a back pass. I mean, yes, it was a, uh, it had some weight on it, but it was not like it was a clean shot. Uh, does it beat, I think Arsenal made this great on goal from their own line, uh, where the Arsenal defender locked over Seaman. 
correct me if that, but I think I, I, I remember an own goal like that. I think that is still my favorite own goal. But that's definitely up there in the top three. Marseille managed another own goal, uh, a clearance that a striker could not have done better to put the ball into the net. And a 4 0, I think a Yo Jovic uh, scored the two proper Frankfurt goals. So Frankfurt through the worst jerseys in the entire group. The other team was also through, which was Lazio, with just three wins. Uh, that tells you everything about uh, Limassol and Marseille that they are completely out of it. Uh, especially, especially Marseille. I mean, you just were in the Europa League final and now you're making a fool out of yourself. I don't, I really don't get it. It is absolutely, absolute embarrassment. Um, so that group, not very exciting. You gotta be honest with that. It was already done. I think it was the only group that was completely decided after four match days. Okay, I'm going. The next one is, of course, a lot more in interesting. And actually, I saw quite some of Sarsburg against Besiktas. And again, last closed in the second qualifying round to Besiktas because Besiktas scored a last-minute goal in Linz, which was the away goal. Um, in a way, it still hurts, especially if you see how Besiktas is struggling, how Rapid, who last dominated not twice this season completely, is doing well. Um, it really hurts. I think Lask could have could have done a lot in this Europa League season if they would have been able to play. I'm absolutely certain about that. Uh, it, it really hurts a little bit, but then yeah. Hopefully next, next, next year and maybe I want them to play in Europe, but maybe it's not that bad, bad because now they can concentrate on the championship and get their second place. But yeah, Besiktas, within 10 minutes, I think even 7 minutes, Besiktas was down by two goals to Sarpsborg, lowly Sarpsborg. Uh, that in itself is crazy. They, they scored their first goal in the first minute and then they lobbed over Karius of all. Uh, who was a little bit off his line and it went in 2-0 to Salzburg and this would have been a huge result for Salzburg because I like to say Salzburg because they would have uh, put in prime position to qualify uh, at 8 points at the same time and we gotta do it uh, Hank got a lead in Malmö which would have uh, seen their qualification secured uh, and they even doubled up that lead 2-0 at that time Besiktas uh, pulled themselves together and got um, got the game to 2-2. I think Jermaine Lenz uh, scored a great goal uh, to make it 1-2. And so yeah, um, Besiktas is surely the more talented side. So they, sh but still, Sarsborg. <laughs> and I probably say I probably say it wrong. I say it in the German way. I'm sure there's Salzburg or something like that. Uh, if you're from Norway or Norwegian colleagues, how do you pronounce, pronounce that one uh, pro properly? Sorry. Greetings from my transmission here. Uh, the game, uh, Malmö evened up the game to Henk as well, so it's 2 2. Everything uh, was squared, so that's actually already. Two similar games, two similar results, many goals, uh, maybe not the big name teams in there, uh, but honestly, very exciting. And then Besiktas gets a winner. Another wonderfully loved goal by Jermaine Lenz, uh, and I hope you know, against Lenz and not loss, uh, makes it 3 uh, 2 to Besiktas, who now look good in this group. Uh, we have Henk at 8 points, Besiktas at 7, Malmö at 6 and Sarpsborg at 5. And you would think, yeah, this looks about right, um, but there's a lot of drama in there. Everyone still has a chance. We have now Henk at home to Sarpsborg, who needs to get a result. Uh, and Real and Sarpsborg beat, yeah, I love to say this, beat uh, them 3-1 at home. So that's gonna be interesting. And we have Besiktas at home to Malmö, I think also win but you know if the home teams win uh, that sees them through if the game in Norway <laughs> uh, 
Interesting group, we gotta say. Also, an interesting group is the next one where Krasno R gets a two point win against Akisa Sport, puts them at 12 points. This is a group where the home teams uh, win, except it's Akisa Sport who loses every game. Uh, Sevilla I, I had to play in Liege. <laughs> no, I, here I feel more. I mean, they had already a uh, kind of scrappy win uh, at the weekend, and yeah, they probably can do some damage in the league too, so maybe there's also a little, little bit more, more focus. But you, you destroyed those opponents, you destroyed Liege 5 1 in Sevilla. 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 So, I, it's a little bit a mystery to me. Sevilla, they lose to Krasnodar, they lose to Standard, and beat them, uh, and then get them many many goals elsewhere. Uh, I think their goal did the differential is almost unbelievable. And then they get two losses <laughs> despite all that. Um, so yeah, um, they are now level with standard uh, at nine points. Krasnoda has 12. It is easy. Sevilla needs to beat Krasnoda and they are through. They win all the direct duels. Uh, standard has to go to Akisa Sport and needs to get the win there and then I don't know how the... I think Standard might have... Oh, no, no, it's that even between Krasnodar and Standard. So, uh, yeah, interesting group also. Uh, I would say Sevilla will get it done, although you never know. <laughs> That's something possible. If Sevilla does not qualify from this group despite scoring uh, thousands of goals, <laughs> it would be a miracle. Then um, another game that was interesting was it was early played Astana against Kiev, where a draw would have done wonders. And you could see actually in the odds, uh, the draw initially was at 3.2 something, and then it went down to 2.2. But yeah, Kiev gets the winner. Nicely played goal, uh, and qualifies for the next round. Um, Ren. The team that I actually uh, I want Ren and Kiev from this group. Nothing against Astana, not nothing against the Apples, but also teams I have a little bit of connection with. I, I don't have connection with Kiev, but Ren I meet Ren. And, uh, I, I like Ren. Let's put it that way. Not not a huge fan, but you know, sympathies for the northwestern French teams. Anyway, they get the win in Jablonets and now have uh, direct duel. Uh, round 6, Ren at home to Astana, a win sees them through. Uh, draw will see Astana through, Kiev is qualified. And then the last group, uh, again, in a, I, I don't think it was an early, early game, but it was a, um, not in the usual slot for, for the group. It was the 7 o'clock slot. So Bate beats uh, FCVD, Videoton, Shekes Vehervar. Shekes Vehervar. <laughs> Hungarian is not my strongest. <laughs> uh, beat them 2-0, as they had done before, which also makes this. This opens up the group for Pau, who lost twice to FCVD. Believe it or not. So uh, Chelsea then goes on to beat Pau 4-0. Uh, was not helped that Pau within five minutes got a red card. Weird to see Pauk in similar orange jerseys as Besiktas. Uh, I also have to say that. Um, but yeah, Chelsea. I think Giroud scored two, and then two more um, was utter destruction. And the interesting thing is that Pauk still has a chance. I think all they need to do is uh, is beat Bate at home in the final game, and hope that Chelsea takes care of Vidi in Hungary. Vidi makes a point there through. 
Mercedes, but the wins, you know. They are now GLC 15, but the 6, VD6 and Pauk 3. Uh, GLC, of course, qualified in first quarter, the other uh, three kind of trying to get something going. Well, that's a lengthy video on the Europa League, well, a full roundup. And then I didn't have the idea with the note sheets earlier. I don't actually know why, but uh, it was good to have. I don't have to do it all from memory anymore, and I could even tell them when I saw the result, which games I remember. Uh, what I didn't say uh, before is that the best goal was scored by Limassol against Lazio. Also, nice jerseys in that matchup. Mentioned that Lazio lost 2 0 to Limassol. First time that a soccer team beats an Italian one, but you know, since both were through, what can you do? Wonderful bicycle kick. Uh, second goal has to go to Sarsworks 2 0. But you know, there were quite some nice goals. The Europa League is more interesting than many would think. I think there's more, in many ways, more action. It's not the um, it's not the competition where the best soccer is played, but I honestly got to say, in the Europa League, there is many, many interesting things happening. And for that, you gotta watch the Europa League. I actually enjoy it. I just wish it was made more easy, not that all 12 groups play on the same day. Make it a little bit easier. Well, as I said, long video. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know which games you watched, or if you also watched the conference like I did. Um, Give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these and I will talk to you soon. Bye!